Welcome to Success in Life with Robert Tilton, home of whole person prosperity, dedicated to your spiritual, physical, and financial well-being. How to have more life for living, a better life. See your dreams and desires of your heart come true. Learn how to live the rich, full, and abundant life in Christ, that your days may be as the days of heaven on earth today and forever. And now live and rebroadcast across America and around the world is author, entrepreneur, pastor, and modern-day prophet of success and divine prosperity with the new Success in Life television network is Robert Tilton. Okay, I want to welcome all of you that are joining with us today. And <clears throat> we've had technical difficulties on top of technical difficulties. And this is where you find out what you're really made out of. If you find out if there's any flesh left, and I will just add that there's still a little bit of flesh left, but uh, we're working through some issues. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> I am such a colossal big dreamer that I just talk myself and everybody else around me to dream big with me because I just walk in the revelation that God is our big God. As D.L. Moody said to his sons on his deathbed in 1899, if God is your business partner, dream big. For with the Lord, with God, all things are possible. Let me remind those of you that are watching, and uh, this is being, uh, being rebroadcast at a later date, uh, but Jesus is just the same today as he was yesterday. And that's very comforting in a world that changes by the minute. The world that we live in today is not the world that we were living in yesterday, but God gives us faith to believe what he said. When we believe what God says, we have oh, 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 mountain moving faith. Coming up on today's broadcast, you're going to uh, hear a powerful testimonial about one of our special friends and special partners, and that's Robert and Sandy Skiles. I don't think Sandy's going to be joining with us today, but uh, she's there supporting her husband. And they had an ongoing trial of faith. Their faith was tested and tried, but they did not give up on the big, big God that they know. Let me also remind you that we have our book available. Our, my book is entitled, How to Be Rich, and have everything you ever wanted. You know, part of our commission and is that we're to preach the gospel to the poor. And Bob, are you saying that you're to preach the gospel to the poor so they don't have to be rich? Well, so they don't have to be poor, they don't have to be broke, how that they can have their needs supplied through God's riches and glory through Jesus Christ. The gospel to the poor is the fact that Jesus Christ redeemed us, is, now, though we were rich, yet for your sake, he became poor. Though he was rich, yet for your sake, he became poor so that you through his poverty could be rich. He bore the curse of lack there at Calvary, lack of health, lack of purpose, lack of joy, lack of the ability, lack of faith. Oh my, listen to this. We didn't have the God kind of faith. But Jesus supplied what we needed so that we could have what we needed through the God kind of faith. So the book is available. All you need to do is use that QR code on the left-hand corner, or you can call and give us your address, and we will be glad to send that book to you. So just coming up in a few moments, Robert Skiles is going to be talking. We're going to have a conversation by uh, by by uh, a streaming, a Zooming type of type of service. So right after this announcement, we'll be back with Robert Skiles. Start living your dream life today. Make your Thanksgiving vow of faith. Whatever the amount the Lord is putting on your heart as a sacrificial offering unto Him, whether it's $100, $500, 1000 or whatever the amount as you purposeth in your heart that takes faith, God will begin giving you seed to sow and shine His divine favor upon your path. When you vow, you are accepting Daniel's 21-day power of agreement miracle challenge and beginning your free trial Success in Life Club membership with all of its benefits. I will also be mailing you your free blessed prayer cloths and miracle anointing oil that I have personally blessed and fervently prayed over. Stake your claim 
to your divine inheritance. Like Jacob, you're vowing your vow to go into business with God for debt-free living and learning how to pay your bills supernaturally. As you vow and pay, you will also receive this time to build and live your dream life prosperity course from our Ultiversity. Call me right now and say what you want God to do for you. You are not buying miracles. You are worshiping God and making tremendous power available through your actions of faith. Begin sowing your seeds as God provides, all at once, weekly, monthly, or over a year. Jacob bowed to tithe and became Israel to rule as God's regent king in the earth and became one of God's millionaires in the making. Are you next? Amen. God bless you. We're back. And joining us now uh, on our streaming video service is Robert Skiles. God bless you, Robert. It's great to see you with your hat on and your glasses. And Robert is one of the most international known guitar uh, uh, trainers, teachers there is. And uh, God bless you, Robert. Thank you for being on the broadcast with us today. My pleasure, Pastor. Thank you for having me. God bless you. Now, tell me a little bit about you and Sandy and how we met. And uh, that's, let's talk about your, your, your uh, blessed guitar business. And then let's get into how faith works. But those of you that are uh, watching us today, uh, Robert and Sandy have been special friends of ours for several years. And uh, we talk on the phone often and we talk faith and we talk encouragement to each other. And Robert, let's just let this be like one of our, one of our tele, uh, telephone conversations when we talk to each other and chat and see what's going on and get an update on, on what's, what's cooking. Right, well, Sandy and I have been married, been married for 51 years. So, and we've both uh, been, you know, children of the Lord and uh, serving the Lord ever since the early 70s. And uh, I came across your teaching. Uh, I think somebody gave me a cassette tape or something back in the late 70s or early 80s. And anyway, so we started watching you and your broadcast, your daily broadcast. And I just immediately felt a um, uh, connection with, with with the quote unquote type of uh, ministry that you have and the way you uh, taught faith. Now, so Robert, uh, years, what, 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 what type of ministry do I have? Well, you know, the apostle Paul talked about manifold ministries. In other words, there, there could be someone who's just got a lot of different giftings, you know, in, in, in peace and, and marriage and prosperity and healing and salvation and I would consider your your ministry to be a manifold ministry because you 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 minister in a lot of different veins. Um, one of the of course one of the main veins that, that you minister out of is is financial prosperity, and uh, we know that that's that's God's will from Genesis to Revelation. It, it's a main thread that runs all through the word of God. Uh, I like, Robert, I like to call it financial breakthrough. That, that financial we, breakthrough. We, we, we all, including myself and Maria, we have to have financial breakthroughs that the principalities and powers uh, do everything that they can to withhold back uh, our inheritance. Glory to God. We have an inheritance as an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus. And, 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 and it, it seems like that, that, that in our life, we need that breakthrough to get those windows of heaven opened. Anyway, keep, I'd just like to inject a little thought there, Robert. No, Great. no, 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 for yourself. No. And, and of course you have a, you have, you have an amazing revelation on financial breakthrough. And, uh, and there are several ministers that do, but you are the top, of the heap okay <laughs> you are the number one and 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 if we had some of these ministers lined up right now they would say oh yeah Rob, bob tilton got me got me in, in, anointed in this ministry so uh, there's many of them that credit you for that but um uh, the financial breakthrough and um i i like to call you know you and i have said this about each other um the way I minister to people is I'm 
I'm a how-to minister. And I believe I got this anointing from you because you are a how-to minister. You know, a lot of times, preachers, we love every every man and woman of God behind a pulpit. We love them. But a lot of times, just out of frustration or, or because of the how tired they are because of their of their people always always asking questions and needing things a lot of pastors in churches uh just wind up saying well just trust god just trust god hang on hang on lord knows hang on hang on lord knows let go let go because the angels are working you know well that's that's good and that's all true but a lot of times you know you, you look at the you look at the old testament prophets they were how to prophets. They said, go, go bring me a biscuit. If you bring me a biscuit first, you'll have food in your pantry. You know, that, that, that widow that came to Elisha said, you know, I'm in, I'm so far in debt that they're coming this afternoon to get my boys and take them to jail until I pay my bills. You know, Elisha didn't say, well, you know what, let's, let's pray. Let's just believe God. No, he said, what do you got? Show me something you got. So these, so, so uh, even in the Old Testament, a lot of these ministers were, a lot of these prophets were hands-on prophets. They would tell the people exactly what to do. You know, the waters, the water was too bitter to drink. You know, so Moses got a stick. He did something. It's how to. Nuts and bolts. He threw the stick in the water and the water became sweet. You know, so I I kind of look at your ministry, Pastor, <clears throat> as being a how-to ministry because you tell people, you bring them the word, first of all. You've got an anointing to bring the word. But then you start telling them, look, look, dig a hole and let God fill it up. You know, plant a seed. Uh, believe God. Rebuke the devil. You know, so you're a very, your ministry is 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 manifold you got a lot of different veins but the main one was is a financial breakthrough and you are a hands-on how to minister and well that's, i, that's I remember how robert i remember how that anointing anointing came on me and uh i in, in my type of ministry has come through uh uh thick and thins uh, the, the anointing upon my life has come through a lot of trials and tribulations and, and Robert, you yes. and I both know that, uh, we were at the top for many years. Uh, we were the largest daily broadcaster there was with 287 hours a day in all national markets and, uh, through fake news and the press attacking me and relentlessly for over a year, uh, 26 lawsuits. Uh, every just about every government agency imaginable came in on us uh, and did everything they could uh, to destroy us. They were looking for any way, anything that they could do to shut us down because the devil doesn't like the revelation and the amount of light that I bring to a believer. Uh, yeah, you know, and and so uh, I was at the top and went to the bottom. A lot of personal loss, a lot of personal pain for many years. And of course, the Lord is a God that restores. And of course, I met my beautiful sweetheart, Maria, of uh, 20 years marriage and our two beautiful twin daughters, Rebecca and Elijah Sunshine. Uh, I know what it is to be knocked down. I know what it is to get back up. And I found, oh yes, there's the resurrection power and you can get back up. I got back up oh, several times. And uh, But I remember what happened, Robert, we were about a million and a half dollars in debt <clears throat> sometimes in the, in the early eighties. And I went away for, for seven days of prayer and fasting. And uh, I heard about oral uh, Roberts reading through the new Testament on his knees. And I just said, well, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to read through the new Testament on my knees. And uh, it, it was, it was a long uh, seven days, but I did make it through the New Testament on my knees. Didn't seem like anything happened except uh, I was ready to have a nice uh, steak when it was all over with. But when I got back home, I was reading there in the Bible on 1 Kings 17 and how the brook had dried up for Elijah. And when I read that, it's like I just began to weep inside. And then as I continued to read how the Lord sent him to the woman who frankly didn't have anything. She was at the end of what she had. 
Glory to God. But God knows how to turn what looks like the end into a new beginning. Out of crisis comes opportunities. Out of crisis comes opportunities. The old right. saying goes that, that uh, uh, when there's a need, uh, God can fill that need. And when I read that scripture, I heard the Lord say, I'm not sending you to those that have it or don't need anything or want anything, but I'm going to send you to people that have needs in their life that are hungry, that are thirsty. They want purpose. They want they want uh, divine direction. They they want peace. Uh, they 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 need a miracle. And as I read that, I realized that that anointing of the prophet Elijah came upon me and I began to yeah. speak with a greater authority to break break the pens of principalities and powers off of people's lives. I needed them broke. I need those devils broken off of my life. And God's people need those devils broken off of their life. Right. Uh, Robert, do you, do you, you I don't want to take all the air, all the, all the air time, but go, go on. I, I remember, and I'm sure you remember that dream that I had when I was first born again, there was a hellacious thunderstorm going on. It was hailing big blocks of ice hail and 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 i saw all these people hiding under their chairs and uh, they were afraid they were afraid of the storm they were afraid of life they were just all cowed down and beat down and the spirit of god stood up on the inside of me and i out yeah. of my mouth came these words the earth is the lord's and the fullness therein and i Ooh. spoke to those devils of hell those principalities and powers over over the cities and over those people's lives and immediately the hell stopped and tremendous power went into those people and they begin to stand up in power, resurrection power of Jesus Christ also. And later I was praying in tongues and the Lord said, I've used you to break the principalities and powers that have been over this city and other cities for years. And now my ministers and my people will operate under a fresh and new anointing. No doubt about it, Robert, I have an anointing to break lack and to break fear and to break, to break the principalities and powers off of God's people. For the anointing, saith the Lord, is what breaks the yoke. And I have placed my hand upon you to release my people that have been captives and to bring healing to those that are brokenhearted. And yes, to preach the gospel to the poor, that I've redeemed them from the curse of poverty, sickness, and death, so that they can now operate and enjoy the inheritance that I've given them, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, wow. hallelujah, yeah. hallelujah, yeah. hallelujah, Thank you, Lord. Thank hallelujah, you, Lord. Thank hallelujah, you, Lord. hallelujah, Thank hallelujah. You, Lord. We're living in our inheritance, Robert. We're teaching the believers how to, how to, how to enjoy their inheritance. You know, right. you hear about these trust fund babies and you hear about these people that are living off their inheritance. Glory to God. We're, we're, we're Robert, you and Sandy, we're, we're living off of our inheritance. We have an inheritance in Christ. So Robert, uh, you know, I, I did get stirred uh, because I see the anointing that's upon you, knowing what it's done in your life and how it's brought you into a place yeah. of peace, health, and prosperity. So continue yeah. on a little bit, and I'll just jump in every now and then when I feel a good spark of the Holy Ghost. Well, we uh, were watching your shows on TV, living our lives. You know, we life goes on, and this is a period of years, you know, and then... Uh, one, uh, and we got communication from your ministry. We got letters in the mail. And then one um, Saturday afternoon, got a letter from the ministry, opened it up, and it said, uh, come join us in Anaheim for a miracle service, Robert Tilton. And so we were living in Orange County, right out here by Disneyland. And I told Sandy, I said, oh, we're going to go out there, and I'm going to meet him personally and um and she said you think i said oh yeah no question i said i said we're going out there so we went out there i don't know it was on a saturday night or something it was around service started around seven and uh i forget how it up how it happened i think i wrote you a note i was on the front row i mean <laughs> i always like to be on the front row when i go to church i like to be on the front row i want to I want to. I want to get close to everything, and I passed you a note and said I want to meet you, or <clears throat> I've been following your ministry. Anyway, uh, you called us up in front of the uh, uh, congregation there, and we kind of testified. 
But afterwards, uh, after the meeting, uh, people were getting prayed for and had a prayer line. After the meeting, I was walking out, and I think, I think uh, your brother-in-law Alex was there helping you, or somebody maybe uh, as one of the ushers. And I gave Alex my name and my telephone number. I said, "Have, have Pastor call me if he ever needs me to help him." So. You know, about a week later, I, I get a call from Robert Tilton here at the house. And uh, and so whenever you came out to Orange County, we were there. And I, I am a musician, so I, you know, I brought my music. And uh, so one thing led to another. And uh, then uh, you guys were ministering out here in Southern California. And we ministered with you uh, as your as your associates. Uh, there in Los Angeles every every month and and so the rest is history. We're, we're friends and uh, and we're in the ministry together and it's just been beautiful. It's just been we've seen so many miracles attached to your ministry that it, it's just been wonderful, Pastor. Amen. Give that testimony about your house. This is this is a remarkable financial testimonial of the Wow of the Val. Okay, uh, in two thousand six. Uh, we bought our dream house here and it was just beautiful and uh, making our payments and 2011, I'm going to shorten the story down, but in 2011, um, five years after we bought it, we missed a couple of payments due to some uh, employment problems or money flow. Anyway, we missed, we missed two payments. <clears throat> Well, the mortgage company wouldn't let us make one payment. We had to make both of those payments up. And at the time, we didn't have the money to make two payments. So months went by. You can't make one payment. You got to make four payments. You know, months went by. You guys are 10 payments behind on your house payment. Anyway, long story short, this went on for six years. We couldn't, you know, scrape up enough money to make this giant payment we had we had payments we had money you know to make one or two house payments and get back on track but the mortgage company wouldn't do that the payment the late payments and the fees just kept stacking up and up and up and up so the house went into foreclosure the house was in foreclosure for six years not six weeks not six months six years every month we'd be getting notification from the bank and uh your house is going up for auction it's going to be sold next 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 month so <clears throat> i asked the lord i just sought the lord we both did and right in the middle of this trial you know i i said lord you gotta give me direction i mean i'm i gotta know how to how to on this thing so the lord gave me two two plans. One of them was a natural plan and the other one was a spiritual plan. The natural plan was every Monday morning for an hour, he told me to be on the phone and the computer, call the mortgage company, call the attorneys, call real estate agents, whoever I can call. You know, I got tons of mail uh, from these people that wanted to help us. So every Monday morning I would call because the Lord said, Look for a miracle. Look for a miracle. Look, pick up the phone. Use what you have available to you. Yeah, faith without works so, is dead. Yeah. So you have to, you have to, you know, you have to, you have to do something. I, I mean, even Gideon, when you when you think about Gideon, you know, he was he was the poor, he was beat down, but at least he was somewhere threshing wheat <coughs> when the angel came to him. He was threshing wheat. You know, he was doing something. You know. And so, anyway, uh, then he said, the spiritual plan for you is I want you to have communion every morning when you get up. Get a little cracker and get some juice, and I want you to worship me with communion. Just thank me for your healing. Thank you for the, the stripes. Thank you for the blood on the cross. And then he said, uh, I want you to speak to the house. I want you to walk around the house and talk to it and say, this house belongs to me. Talk to, and, uh, went, talk to the house. Talk to the house. Talk to the house. Talk to the house. Talk to the mountain. Talk to the wind. Talk to yeah. talk to the bread. 
Jesus Talk did it. the birds. Jesus, you know, when they needed wine, you know, they came to Jesus and said, we're out of wine. You know, well, he's God. Why didn't he just, why didn't he just blink his eyes and, and, and say, wine, B. Oh, no, no, no. He said, what do we got? Bring me some water. Bring, bring some water over here. So, you know, a lot of times we, we just sit on the couch, you know, and expect Oprah Winfrey to call or something. I don't know what we do. You know, we're just waiting on the Lord, waiting on the Lord. You got to do something. He told me to walk around the house. He told me to speak to my checkbooks. So every morning I'd, I I have a business account and a personal account. I'd talk to those checkbooks and tell, tell money to get in those checkbooks. Uh, and so uh, he told me, last but not least, to seek out at least three or four ministers that minister in the area of prosperity. And you're at the top of the list. And so... My wife, Sandy, said, I'm going to sow a thousand dollar seed into into Reverend Chilton's ministry so we can get out of this mess. So that's what she did. She sowed a thousand dollars into Word of Faith Ministries. And long story short, one thing happened after the other. I even I even had to go to court and talk to a judge. Now, Robert, because, uh, tell, tell the part about how that they were coming to the sheriffs were coming to your house. To try to kick you out, they were putting signs on your house. Uh, oh. Tell tell all of that going on in the mail. Oh man, we we we'd go to the store, and buy some food, and come home. And there'd be notices on our door, you know, and we'd be eating dinner, and someone would knock on the on the door, front door. I'd go to the door. There'd be some people there. Hey, uh, we bought your house yesterday. So we want to go out in the backyard and take a look and take some pictures. Is that all right? No, 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 no. You didn't buy my house. You know, so all these all these vultures came in. Yeah, and one one time a couple of men were standing at the door and they had like sheriff's shirts on. They said, You got seventy two hours to get out. Uh you, you're being evicted. Well, we haven't heard anything from the mortgage company or anything. So we just, you know, I just went back and sat down at the dinner table and my wife would say, Who was that at the door? And I said, oh, I don't know, somebody trying to sign us up for papers or something. <laughs> you know, I, I, <laughs> I, have, I have to protect my wife. So anyway. Well, I, I, you know, I, uh, I I had that happen to Maria and I once, and it wasn't a good feeling, you know. Yeah, thank God those days are over. But anyway, keep telling your, give your, give your testimony here. I'd be walking around the house, and uh, there'd be notices on the door. And my mind is just going crazy. See, your mind... Your mind is is a is a is a is an earthly adjuster. It lets you know what is happening right now. So my mind's just saying, "Hey, fool! What are you walking around the house for? Those notices are hanging on your door. You know the neighbors are out there." And so anyway, so the, the neighbors are watching different. all these people show up at your house, walking yeah, around. Well, oh yeah. So I had a I had a call into a real estate agent. And he said, uh, I know what you're going through. I went through the same thing a few years back. He said, you guys ought to stay in your house as long as you can because you never know you might win the lottery or something. So <laughs> he was kind of encouraging. So uh, he said, you know what? Why don't we put the house on the market for one weekend? We're going to put the house on the market and we're going to show the house to a bunch of people. They'll walk through and and." If we get an offer, then we'll send the offer to the mortgage company, to your mortgage company. And the, when the mortgage company gets the offer, all legal things at your mortgage company against you has to end because there's a there's a legal buyer trying to buy the house. So all this, all this, all this paperwork and stuff coming to the door and all that nonsense will stop for at least 60 days. So I said, okay, so we, we cleaned the house up and people came one weekend and uh, sure enough, we got an offer. Now, you, 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 now Robert, you, you paid that vow. You made a vow, right? You, you, right. you made a vow, a thousand dollar pledge. You'd made the vow in time of need. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. And so had you paid the vow yet? Yes. Okay. Yes. 
And so, so you've got this real estate guy that's really trying to get, get things moving. And, uh, people came and looked at the house and somebody, you got a, a, a deal on the house. They put an offer in my real estate agent said, I'm sending the offer. I got the offer on my desk. I'm sending it to them, to the mortgage company. As soon as it lands on their desk, all these, all these, all these legal things against you are going to be stopped because they're, they believe the house is going to be sold. Well, I waited two or three days and I called the mortgage company. They say, we don't, we don't have anything other. Yeah, we got the, we got the offer, but we're not accepting it. This isn't a good offer. We're not accepting the offer. We're throwing it out. So I had an attorney during that time and the attorney said, take that offer to the judge, go down to the Orange County district judge. I took the offer. I walked, I walked into the courtroom. I saw a, a clerk, the clerk said, well, wait here. So I waited and the clerk came out and said, the judge wants to see you in private chambers. Really? I said, okay. So I put the offer under my arm and I walked into the judge's private chambers and the judge said, let me see that. I go, I told the judge what was going on. We've been six years foreclosure. The mortgage company won't work with us. You know, I handed the, the real estate offer to the, the judge. She said, this, this isn't, this isn't a, a real offer. This real estate agent and his wife are trying to steal your property from you. I said, really? She said, yeah. She said, how much, how much does it take to get the property out of Hawk? I said, $286,000. She said, wow. Okay. This, this real, uh, this offer is no good the, They're trying to steal your house. So just get rid of this offer. Just don't do anything with it. And I'm going to give you guys 60 days grace. Nothing's going to happen to your house for 60 days. Just go out for a nice dinner, relax. Wow. So I left out of there partly in victory and partly depressed, you know. About three days later, I get a call from this girl at the mortgage company. She said, I'm your new contact now. I said, oh, okay. What's your name? She said, <laughs> she said, Kathleen. Kathleen. I said, well, Kathleen. We've been in this predicament for six years. I've had about 127 representatives from the mortgage company call me. She said, well, I'm your new one. Tell you what you do. I'm going to send you some forms over on the computer. And I want you to fill out those forms. And I want you to fax them to me tonight as soon as you can. I said, we've already filled those forms out many times. And they've been rejected. They, I, I said, your company wants the money. She said, please, I'm just trying to do my job. Fill out the forms. I filled the forms out. I faxed them over that night. The next day, she said, well, I got your forms. I stacked them all up and I put them on the, on the mortgage company's attorney's desk. She said, I don't know. You're probably out of luck, but I, I put them there. About four days later, I go out and check the mailbox. There's a letter in the mail that says that $286,000 has been erased. You're on a, if you make the next three payments, you can be current. So that's the, that's what happened in 2017. And here it is 21. We're current with our payments. Our house was saved. We went through all that. And I, I believe, and, and, and Sandy believes that it was because we, 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 we gave a thousand dollar offering to your ministry in faith, believing that that was the seed that was going to turn the tide. So that's well, our story. You made you made God your source. Yes. You know, and he owns the cattle on a thousand hills and he owns the silver and the gold. And and I know there's the natural way of looking at things and we all live in the natural realm and uh and said but lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy uh, ways acknowledge me and I shall direct thy paths. That's right. And we have to it and then the Lord says if any man draws back his soul will have no pleasure in him. You were doing everything you knew to do in the natural. You were calling, you are doing everything you need to do that you had gotten behind two or three payments and they wouldn't let you catch up. Uh, it just turned into a snowball effect and, and only God can untangle a, 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 a rope, you know, at the stream. 
you know, back when we were when we were going through it, we were the largest ministry at that time there was. And we had so many lawsuits. I was sitting in courtrooms and depositions, uh, personal problems. Uh, just it, it was just hell in every direction. I had to make myself breathe. And I told the Lord, only you can untangle the biggest mess I've ever seen. I don't have the brains or know what to do to untangle this impossible situation. But I cast my care up on the Lord and he took care of you, Sandy and Robert, he took care of me. Now, what I'm seeing is that you did what you could do in the natural, but you were also yeah. making God your source of supply, you know, and uh, that he would supply what you needed to be able to get what you wanted. And uh, yeah. God gave you favor, supernatural favor. He, he removed that mountain of debt. Psalms 50 right. verses 14 and 15 says, offer unto God thanksgiving. Pay thy vows on the most high. And he said, call upon me in the day of your trouble. I will hear your prayer and will deliver you. That woman with the, with the issue of blood, she heard the truth. And she said within herself, when I touch his garment, I'll be whole. She wrote her own ticket with God. And right. your faith, Robert, made you and Sandy whole. You, got, you, you were made whole in your finances. You were made whole in your house. And God just works miracles. That was a supernatural divine intervention not because it just fell out of the sky, but because you applied certain principles in your life. Principles will bring about miracles. You know, right. many Christians, they're just waiting. They're, 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 they're hoping everything's going to turn out okay. But you had corresponding actions you gave out of your need. God saw that. You gave you, $1,000 is a lot of money. Anyway, you slice and dice it. And, but you were willing to right. do, you were willing to give your best to God, and that gave your that that was the financial breakthrough. You know, when we tithe and give offerings, it's a spiritual thing to to release your tithes and offerings. And the Lord says that if we would tithe and give offerings, He would break the curse off of us from robbing from Him, and He would that would open the windows of heaven. You had heaven opened up. Don't you know, Robert, those angels were out there doing all kinds of things around the clock to get that to be brought about. Step by step, oh, yeah. God was leading you through the Red Sea where there seemed to be no way. That's a word for you, sister. That's, that's your breakthrough. That woman that was yeah. about to eat her last meal and die, the prophet began to prophesy and told her, thus saith the Lord. She believed what the Lord said through the prophet. And she acted upon it in her time of death. And that released her, her faith opened the windows of heaven and her meal barrel did not run dry and her cruise of oil did not fail. I call it cash flow. She increased Woo. her cash flow because she was willing to look beyond the natural realm while we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things that are not seen for the things that are seen are temporal, temporary. Glory to God. And the things that are not seen are eternal and they are permanent. We choose to put our faith in the things of God. And Robert, you and Sandy know how many times you prayed for Maria and I and, and all those things we were going through a, a, a few months ago when it looked like there was no way that the, 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 the devil was trying to put everything that we had into, once again, uh, receivership. And now the sheriffs were trying at, in all the courtroom battles that we had had on Zoom right in the middle of the pandemic. But God gave us a miracle and we were able to resolve all those tremendous giant problems. God's That's a right. problem solver. Glo That's right. God is a problem solver. There's someone right now that needs to call for prayer. You need to call for prayer right now and allow us to pray for you in a few moments before we go off the air. Someone also right now needs to make a pledge vow and you need to pay that pledge vow right now for your breakthrough. Right now, there's a phone number on the screen. You can call it. You can also go to the website, which connects us to connects you to our church site. And there's a place you can fill out for your bank card right then and there. You need to do it and you need to do it right now before the devil steals this, this moment. You got to seize the moment out of your hands. So Robert, you got your house. Now, how long has that been since that house has gotten straightened back out and, and how much debt was canceled? How, how much, how much of that debt was canceled? $286,000. Gone. Gone. And now you just started making payments again, all those yeah. back payments. Yeah. They made it right. Yeah. Yeah. 
I yeah, also would say, Robert, I'd like to say to the people that are watching that you and Sandy have been faithful to tithe to our ministry for many, many years. Robert, yeah, what, right. what are your thoughts on tithing? How, how, do, how do you see it? Now, I'm, you know, I'm here on this side of the desk and you're there. I'm here in Florida and you're there in California and we're, we're doing this feeding and we're going to have more people come on our daily show like this. How, how do you and Sandy see the tithing? How, how, how do you see those scriptures and what does that do for you? Well, I, I, I believe that, that uh, as much that is given to us, I mean, we right on down to our breath every morning, right on down to, right on down to our health, right on down to the, the, the sun that shines for us, right on down to the moon that lights up the night, right on down to the, the, the 35 billion cells that each of us have in each one of our bodies. Everything is given to us. God himself, why? Ask him when you get to heaven, okay? But God himself requires, he has a requirement when it comes to something in our life that has, has the possibility of becoming a God. And let me tell you something, nothing in our life has the possibility of becoming a God like money. Mm -hmm. I mean, money, money is beautiful. You know, uh, you know, John Wayne said, uh, money's not everything, but it's a lot more comfortable to cry in a Mercedes than it is on a bicycle. <laughs> you know, so, you know, you know, money's not everything we need. We need money. OK, but but Father God has put up he's put a, a, a he's put a, a governor on it for two reasons. Number one, to 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 control us a little bit. And number two, once we get into his payment plan, which is a tenth, that's what the tithe is. It means ten. Once we get into his payment plan, the the the. The ceiling is completely off of how much money that you can you can call into your life because you're in right standing in, in a money way with him. That tenth, I I believe I I believe that that tree, I believe that tree in the garden that he told Adam and Eve, you you got all the rest of the trees, but don't touch that tree. I believe that had something to do with the tithe, the tenth. It, it, it belonged to him. You, you can, and, and if you obey him in this, everything else is going to be blessed. If you tithe, I mean, just, 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 just give 10% of any kind of money that comes into your hands. What you're doing is you're obeying God spiritually. And number two, you're telling money, hey, I got power over you. You know, everything has, everything's got ears. Everything listens. Your money listens to you. You know, so every time you, every time you get a check, every time you get a, you open up a birthday card from Matt Martha, and you're then there's a twenty dollar bill in there. Any kind of money you get, just take ten percent of it, whatever it is. If it's that twenty bucks, take two dollars. I don't know. Stick it in an envelope and mail it off. But you're telling money. You know, we live on an economic planet. There's not a day goes by but what all of us think, sometime or another. I wonder if I got enough money in the bank to buy that, whatever that is, a boat, a shirt, a pair of socks. We live on an economic planet. So what happens is when you tithe, number one, you're obeying God and you're stepping into his blessings. He, he says in Malachi that if you bring the tithe to him, he opens up the windows of heaven and blesses you. So, and number two. The God, the, the tithe, 10%, right. 90% belongs, yeah. 90 to, belongs to us. 10% belongs to God and Jesus tithe. That's Remember it. when Peter asked Jesus, do we pay our tithe, the temple tax? Do we tithe? And Jesus says, yes, we don't want to offend anyone and told Peter how to go get some money to be able to pay the tithe. You know, tithing, uh, the devil loves to attack tithing and attack believers who do tithe and believe sure. in tithing. But the, the devil doesn't, when, when I, you know the story, Robert, when, when, uh, when Satan himself came in to, to destroy me, he came into my bedroom himself. Yes. I saw him. I experienced him. Evil beyond evil. Black beyond black. His eyes were infuriated. He was madder than hell. And he's lunged on me to, to destroy me and to kill me right then and there. 
And he said that he, his, his emissaries or imps had failed to, to, to stop me from preaching this message of tithes, vows, and offerings. And that he was infuriated because he had had to come himself to stop me. And you know, it was because I was teaching the believer because every time you tithe, it rebukes the devil off of your income, off of exactly. your business, off of your home, off of your health. Off of, off of, it, it breaks the curse of robbing God off of you because Satan has a way to get into you by you not being obedient and faithful to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. You know, God said, if we'd be a doer of the word, well, part of the word is staying in faith. Part of the word is walking in forgiveness. Part of the word is walking uh, in your words, confessions of faith. Part of the word is tithing by being a doer and not a hearer only. Tithing is not a curse. Tithing breaks the curse. Tithing Good releases word. the blessings. When that woman gave out of her need, she worshiped. Oh, yes. Honoring God. Honor the Lord with the substance, the first fruits of each week about increase. So shall thy barns, thy storehouses, your savings, your checkbook, your pocketbook shall be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. New revelation, new creation, new thoughts, new clothes, new cars, right. new home. Glory to right. God. The blessings, right. of, 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 the blessings of supporting the work of God. The blessings of spreading the gospel. The blessings where more people can hear the good news that Jesus died on the cross to forgive us of our sins. Tithing started before the law. Tithing was incorporated with the law and tithing was after the law. There was Jesus who is a priest after the order of Melchizedek and he receives tithes to this day. When you pay your tithes and vows, Jesus is the one that receives them. And then he rebukes the devil. Satan himself was infuriated with me because I was, he says, every time you teach that in God's people tithe, he rebukes makes me let go of what I've been stealing from him. God, oh yes, brings a head of protection over his people. When Job went through so much, Satan was infuriated because God had put a hedge of protection around Job and all of his possessions. Of course, Satan challenged God saying, Job only serves you for prosperity and divine protection. But God said, no, let's just find out. Job's faith was on trial and Job did not stop serving God. Those around him wouldn't serve God. Those around him talked bad about him, but he would not stop serving God. And in the end, God restored his fortunes, gave him a new family. His daughters were the most beautiful women in the land, like my daughters, glory to God. God gave him twice as much as he had had. God gave him double for all of his troubles. Today, you need to stand up with your faith and give the devil a black eye and let him yes. know that you're a tither. You're a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So Robert, you and Sandy tithe. I know you tithe. I see your tithe. I see when people, I, I sign letters. I know what's going on. The tithe is a tool. It's a weapon. It's a sword yes. to come against yes. Satan and to break the principalities and powers off of you and your home and your finances. I'm reminded, Robert, of that scripture in Haggai, which says that he said, you, you, your life is like a bag with holes in it. He says, you sow much and you reap little. He says, you, you drink little, you have nothing. And there in Haggai, he says, because you don't put God first in your life, your life is like a, a, a bag with holes in it. But God will sow those holes. He says, he would open the windows of heaven and give you a portion out of his good treasure. He would, out of, out of his... God, Put your hand in God's pocket and see what he will do for you. David said, we went through the fires and we went through the floods, but thou hast brought us out into a wealthy place. We, I will yeah. pay my vows, which my lips have spoken when I was in trouble. Glory to God. Yes. We know that it breaks the principalities and powers. Robert, that's Psalm 66. It says that, that bow, bowing and paying breaks the principalities and powers off of our lack, off of our yeah. finances, off of our health. It's a powerful thing to worship God with your prayer request. Hallelujah. This is, this is a breakthrough, Lord. right? This is a breakthrough anointing yes. right now for finances, yes, yes. for miracles, yes. to sell a house, buy a house, better job, going through all of this pandemic stuff. I tell you, no plague comes down our dwelling. He says, God said he yes. would rebuke the devourer off of our crops. He would rebuke the devourer off of our finances. 
This is a time to sow and a time to reap, saith the Lord. That's a word for someone. Someone needs to go to that website right now. You need to write me or call or go to our website right now on the screen and pay your vow and tithes right now today. If I've written you, you need to pay them today. There's an anointing right now to release finances, to open those windows of heaven up into your life. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Robert. Thank yes, you, yes, Jesus. Yes, Thank yes, you, yes, Jesus. Yes, yes. Let's just pray, yes, Robert, yes. right now for these people. Robert, I want you to begin to pray for these people in the area of their finances and those that have things that need to be changed in their life. Father God, we, we thank you today for this word. And Father God, we know in your word, you said that you would, you would, you would take care of our infirmities. And the word infirmity just means the area in your life that you're not firm in. For you folks out there right now, I pray for you that need money and that need some financial blessings and some, and some economic stability. You, you're not firm in that area. So you need, you need to have this infirmity wiped out. And the way you do that is you get on God's, God's economic plan. And, and the tithe, the tithe is so important. And, and you need to just, the tithe belongs to the Lord. And, and you need to, if nothing else, I don't like to say this, but because I don't believe in experiments, but if nothing else, try the Lord. Tithe. The next money that comes into your hands in the next 24 hours, uh, take 10% of it and, and, and invest it in this beautiful Word of Faith ministry. And, and, you may have a, you may have a credit card, you know, and and you can you can you can go on the website, Pastor Tilton's website, and and give some money off your credit card. As soon as that seed gets in the ground, it produces, it mm. produces. So so so, people out there that, that that are listening, you know who you are. There's a witness inside your spirit right now, you know, because Jesus said that the anointing that you sow into is the anointing that you receive, receive upon you. So Pastor Tilton is an anointed pastor that has revelations on a lot of things, but his main thing is financial breakthroughs. And if you want a financial breakthrough, sow and invest into this ministry right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> I, thank you, Robert. I'm reminded, I'm, you know, that it, 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 it's, Tithing is a weapon against the principalities and powers. Tithing and giving offerings and making Jacob, Jacob had the revelation. It says, Jesus, Jesus, what's so amazing? This, this is amazing. Isaac blessed Jacob and charged him, telling him, and to thee and, and, and God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply that thou mayest be a, a multitude of people and give thee the blessing of Abraham. We're living off our inheritance, Robert. We're living right. off of our inheritance. Our faith is part of our, a, a, a good man leaves inheritance for his children's children and the wealth of the sinner comes into the hands of the righteous. It's, come, it's, it's a divine transfer is happening. Give thee the blessing of Abraham. We have the blessing of Abraham. The devil doesn't want us to read the well. He doesn't want us to believe. Right. We have to exactly. use our faith to receive out of our inheritance. We have to use our faith to open the windows of heaven. We have to use our faith for, for his riches and glory to come into our hands. Give thee the blessing of Abraham to thee and to thy seed with thee, that thou mayest inherit the land which thou art a stranger in. And then Jacob went on, and, he, and then Jacob dreamed a dream, and it says, the ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven and behold the angels of God ascending and descending on the ladder. That's those blessings coming down from heaven and those, and behold, right. the Lord stood above it. There was the Lord standing above that ladder in heaven with those angels of God coming down. And, 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 and then the Lord said, and of course it was Christ. And the Lord said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father and the God of Isaac. And and unto the, thee that thou will I will give you the land right here. And then it goes on to say that then Jacob awakened, and then Jacob awakened, and Jacob awakened out of his sleep. Are you awake yet? Uh -huh. Are you awake out of your sleep? Are you now conscious of your inheritance in Christ? Are you awake? Yeah. Jacob awakened out of his sleep. 
And he said, surely he had his aha moment. He, he woke up. He became conscious. He became conscious of the fact that he was a child, a child of Abraham. Christ redeemed us from the curse so that the blessings of Abraham would come upon us. If you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Glory. Right. But you have to use your faith. You have to believe the word. How yes, long you will do. you be halted between two opinions? If God is your God, then believe what he said and do it. If he's not, if you don't believe what he said, just get out of the way. Go live your life in the natural realm. But we are believers and believers are inheritors and we're walking. We're living faith to live our inheritance by believing what God said. Faith is a powerful you, thing that will Thank create you, the, your dream life and cause you to manifest Thank the things you, that you've wanted. And then Jacob vowed a vow to tithe. And I love what this says. And Jacob, let me find, and Jacob, this is how you go from rags to riches. Jacob had nothing. This is one of the great transfer stories in the Bible. And Jacob made a vow, a covenant of blessings by tithing, saying, if God will be with me and keep me, that's divine protection. This is the world's greatest insurance policy. This is God's guarantee to prosper and bless you and protect you. And Jacob vowed a vow saying, if God will be with me, his presence of God with you and protect me on the way that I go, that's divine direction and purpose. And then will give me food to eat and clothing to wear. That's divine provision. This is, this is Genesis 28, 20 through 22, the Amplified Translation. And divine provision so that I may come again in my father's house in peace. That's shalom, peace, health, and victory. Over all, give me peace over all my enemies. Glory to God. That's the power of the tithe right now to give you peace over all of your enemies. Then the Lord shall be my God source of all supply and all the increase of possessions and prosperity that you give me, I will surely give you a tithe, a tenth of it. The power of 10, the power That's of it. giving God his 10%. He owns it all, but he's watching to see what we do with what belongs to him. If we're right. faithful in another man's possessions, we will be faithful in ours. Jesus gives us each talents and then he's going to return to see what we did with what he gave us. And the one that buried it, he said, you should have given it to those that were investing it and doing something with it. Amen right. and amen. The address is on the screen. The phone number is on the screen. The email address is on the screen. The free book is on the screen. If you'd like to get that free book, it's available to you. Robert, thank you so much. Is Sandy, Sandy, can you peek your head around the corner? Is Sandy, Sandy, can you here, peek your head? Here she comes. Here she and comes. My beautiful wife. <laughs> what a blessing. This is fabulous. Hey, man. God bless you, Sandy. We love you and Robert so God much. Bless you. Talk soon. Well, I've got to go. Don't forget to get your free book. It's available. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now they're screaming at me in my ear right now. Oh, yeah. See that little code right there? We're going to be placing digital ads on all the different platforms. And if you help us with those digital ads, when someone clicks that ad, guess what? It will be part of your family tree. And those people that bless it and get our box are going in business with God. All that goes into your, into your kitty. Give, and it will be given back. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. We got big things happening here at Word of Faith Church, the Success in Life Club, and all the things that we're doing. I love you. Robert Tilton, reaching out to you. Thank you for watching the new Success in Life broadcast. Now like the four lepers, don't sit there till you die. Get up and get going into the big life that God has for you. You are co-creators with God. Seize the moment. Go online to our website, successinlife.club. For your free book, How to Be Rich and Have Everything You Ever Wanted, and the introductory lesson on how to build and live your dream life today. Join and enroll in the new Success in Life Club. Rise up and walk into the big life that God has for you. Start living your dream life today. Make your thanksgiving vow of faith. Whatever the amount the Lord is putting on your heart as a sacrificial offering unto Him, whether it's $100, $500, 1000 or whatever the amount as you purposeth in your heart that takes faith, God will begin giving you seed to sow and shine His divine favor upon your path. When you vow, you are accepting Daniel's 21-day power of agreement miracle challenge and beginning your free trial Success in Life Club membership 
with all of its benefits. I will also be mailing you your free blessed prayer cloths and miracle anointing oil that I have personally blessed and fervently prayed over. Stake your claim to your divine inheritance. Like Jacob, you're vowing your vow to go into business with God for debt-free living and learning how to pay your bills supernaturally. As you vow and pay, you will also receive this time to build and live your dream life prosperity course from our Ultiversity. Call me right now and say what you want God to do for you. You are not buying miracles. You are worshiping God and making tremendous power available through your actions of faith. Begin sowing your seeds as God provides, all at once, weekly, monthly, or over a year. Jacob bowed to tithe and became Israel to rule as God's regent king in the earth and became one of God's millionaires in the making. Are you next?